Uh, there are meteorologist Robert Spetta. A lot going on in the tropics today. Now, in the near term, nothing significant. We have this area off of our east coast of the Carolinas moving out to sea, plus a moderate risk of tropical development in the mid-Atlantic. Not in the next 48 hours, but probably by next week sometime. This could turn towards the north east of Bermuda and kind of head off towards the north. But you see below me here, that is the long range ensembles per the GFS. In the ECMWF, it's a very similar output. That is what a lot of people are kind of keening their attention to here today. So first off, let's talk about the near term, what we do have. And as I mentioned, there's this low risk of development off the coast of the Carolinas. But look at the trough extending back towards the west along this. And this trough is the reason why we have a weather impact alert in place for the first coast, the northern half of Florida with this widespread instability and we're going to have these waves of showers come on shore. It is not a hurricane but it is this very tropical atmosphere which is expected for August but it's not just your isolated afternoon showers. We're going to have waves of rainfall through Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And even here on our future cast, you can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about through those afternoon hours. Storms march inland. Saturday morning, we get another round right there of coastal showers. It's going to be kicking up right along the warm waters of the Gulf Stream in the morning. And then moving further inland as we will head through the afternoon. And then again on Sunday, a similar outcome. So in the end... Especially along the coast where this moisture is pumping on shore, there could be spots seeing as much as four to five, maybe in isolated locales, about six inches of total precipitation on top of already saturated grounds creates that risk of increased flooding. And that's going to be one of the big issues with that. But let's look at the broader picture because, you know, we're talking about the tropics in general. Dexter, shown right here, is gone post tropical. It's out in the North Atlantic. Unless you are a ship that is lost. And in, in bad routing by your captain, you're not worried about this. There's some big waves coming out of it. Look at this little guy. That's our moderate risk in the mid-Atlantic, and I'm not terribly concerned about that. That is, It's coming down, actually, from 24 hours ago into likelihood of development. It's continuing to stay weak. This is where everybody's attention is. This, coast, this wave coming off the coastline of Africa, if we look at the long-range outlooks, there has been increasing confidence this could spin up into something. As long as it gets into a break of the Saharan dust here, we have a lot of dry air towards the north, and you can even kind of see it here on the satellite picture. See kind of the little shading right in there? That's that Saharan dust coming in out of, well, the Sahara Desert. Duh. Um, basically, this wave is going to skirt along the southern edge of that. And if we take a look at some of the guidance, you can kind of see it trying to develop off of the coast here and moving off towards the west, rounding the Bermuda High towards the north. Now, the question is, how strong is this Bermuda High going to be? You can see right here, actually, this is that moderate risk of development right there. That one we're currently monitoring. And then this is that next area coming off the west coast of Africa. And this is a little bit more of a zoomed in view from the GFS, specifically the GFS Global Forecasting System, that supercomputer, showing this moving just north of the Bahamas by next Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame. That is still a long range out, friends. Still a lot of uncertainty. Now you compare this with the GFS versus the European. That is the GFS there in blue, the European in yellow. These are two different models that are kind of showing a very similar output. And then we, the graphic I've had below here, this is ensembles. Basically, you have those pretty operational models we show you all the time here. You rip that apart and you look at the different outputs within the supercomputer. And this is indicating a pretty decent increase in confidence that a low pressure area, at the very least, potentially a named storm, is going to be off of the east coast of the United States. How strong and where exactly? Uncertain. But somewhere in this area... We're probably going to have something out here. So, yeah. It, it, and, and the uncertainty lies not only with the storm formation, but the Bermuda High as well. And, and let me explain. So, right here, you kind of have a good idea of where the Bermuda High is. That is this area in the green. But let's say this edge further towards the west. It gets a little bit stronger. Anything that develops down here is going to want to run further towards the west. If it edges further towards the east, and let's say this new storm that's developing near Bermuda... Um, degrades the high, it's going to push everything back towards east and well off of the coast. So these are some of the variabilities we're looking at, even in a long-range forecast. Climatology says that all those variabilities are possible based on right here, the August climatology and where systems typically are. But with long-range forecasts, there's still a lot of uncertainty, chaos theory. Um, the closer we get to that specific date, the more 
increase in the confidence we have at this time. At the very least, it is mid-August. We have tropical systems in the Atlantic. It happens. So the question is, how much of the impacts would be out here? So I'm going to continue to keep you posted. First Coast News dot com slash hurricane central make sure you check it out um we got plenty of graphics there with uh, the latest and greatest information